Hello Galaxy, I'm Chris Perillo, and I want to begin by saying thank you for everybody who is taking the time to listen to me, especially because I know I, I can talk a lot, because I have a lot to say, so I'm going to do my best over the course of the next few weeks to break down what I have to say into separate videos or try to compartmentalize uh, these thoughts that are swimming in my head. Uh, I've been doing this for a number of years, I've been talking about these things, but I've never seen such a largely positive or at least receptive response to what it is I'm laying down right now, specifically in relation to iPhone 10. So there is a response that I kind of want to dive a little deeper on today. Uh, and believe it or not, it has nothing to do with usability, user experience, user interface. Uh, it's specifically in, rela in relation to the cost of the iPhone 10. I'm not talking about cost of, of parts, uh, because you know I think that the 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 whole is greater than the sum of its parts when it comes to uh, anything that a device might be, because there's a lot that goes into producing a dev device beyond the, the the raw cost for a part. Uh, I've seen a lot of responses from people saying, I am not getting the iPhone 10, no way, it's too expensive. So I'm not going to disagree with you. I, that, that's, that's not what I'm here to talk about because, uh, you know, you believe that and, and that is accurate. If, if $1,000 for a, uh, you know, a, a baseline product, like th that's the, 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 the lowest tier that you could possibly get, if that's too expensive for you, no one can debate that. Uh, you know, what I am going to say is that cost is relative. I've talked about this in the past as well, especially when we're talking about cheaper devices or devices that don't really live up to uh, their expectations. Uh, the, the, the tale that I might relate would be, I would rather spend $5 on something that worked very, very well than $1 on something that didn't. Which is more expensive? On paper, the $5 product is obviously more expensive. It's five times as much as the dollar product. But that dollar product didn't work, which means i got to turn around and then spend even more money to find something else that may not work. And maybe spend $4 on a product. So then I've wasted one. Even if I didn't waste that one, maybe I wasted other resources like time, like uh, gas, like anything uh, that, that went into buying that dollar uh, product that just wasn't going to work well. But cost is relative. Um... I have to say that uh, I'd rather spend more on something good. So then it comes down to, is it worth a thousand dollars? And I think that is a more interesting question to dive into. Is the iPhone 10, I'm not going to keep doing this, uh, unless you want me to, the, yeah, it's, 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 you've seen the skull and crossbones. This is me saying, this is what I say to the 10 right here. Uh, you know, it, 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 the iPhone 10 may not be for you. And I don't just mean because of what it is, uh, but maybe because of how much it costs. It's been thrown around for years that the iPhone is a status symbol. People get the iPhone simply to have the Apple logo and the, the brand, and I'm carrying an iPhone. That means I have a luxury product. Apple is moving more and more into that category. They know it. They, they, they by and large, own the category. I'm not going to fault Apple for that, man. If they want to take after the, the, the luxury portion of the marketplace, go for it. I, you know, I can't, you, you can't fault them for that. Uh, you know, that's their, if that's what they believe their business model is, you may be priced out of an iPhone 10. It doesn't necessarily mean that you don't want it, but is the iPhone 10 then worth at its base value uh, in the marketplace, a thousand dollars. And that's mind you, that's the base level. That's like a 64 gig uh, iPhone 10. Uh, you know, you can get the 256 gig uh, and, and spend even more. Uh, that's here in the States. But, you know, you, when you start looking into other countries and how much it's going to cost them, it's going to cost them even more than $1,000 in U.S. money. Uh, so now this item, which we already know is likely going to be in short supply, whether that is uh, uh, you know, because of uh, uh, marketplace demands, you know, supply and demand, or if it's, uh, you know, more uh, uh, contrived supply and demand, like, you know, lowering the supply. I don't know what that was. It was a reminder of something. It's probably a reminder of... Hang on. Oh, yeah. I, I remind myself. I remind myself in my notes. 
this is really eerie to let you know about an additional cost to the iPhone 10 beyond the base model, even if you're able to get it, and that is a fast charging adapters. Now, this is not just with the iPhone 10, but also with the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. You can now enable fast charging. But if you're going to get officially licensed adapters, with the USB cable and the, 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 the power brick, you can charge your iPhones, uh, the newer ones, iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, and iPhone 10. Uh, very quickly, like fast charging. There are going to be third-party accessories eventually uh, uh, available, but right now, if you want to go with Apple uh, or any really third-party, it's going to cost you more to have that feature. It doesn't come in the box. Uh, you know, you get a charging cable and, you know, your adapter, your basics, uh, but that's it. If you want to extract more value from the product you've already purchased, with that feature innate to that product, you have to spend even more. So don't look at this as, oh, it's just going to cost $1,000. You may you may say, all right, I'm willing to just spend $1,000. But then if you spend $1,000, what's another uh, t what's another 200 if you're spending $1,000? What's another $1,300? And, and, and for some people, that's nothing. I'm not in that boat. <laughs> I, I am not the 1%. Uh, if I had an extra $1,000 to spend, it would not be on an iPhone 10. In fact... I wouldn't spend somebody else's money on it. Uh, it's up to you. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just asking you to ask yourself, is this worth a thousand? Not the parts themselves as assembled into the iPhone 10, but in terms of the value that it's going to give you versus what you A, already likely have, or an alternative to the iPhone 10 in this uh, new lineup. Uh, and I think it, it favors... Uh, uh, the iPhone 8 Plus in, in relation to what you get for your money uh, more so than the iPhone 10. Like, if you're going to spend $1,000, I, I mean, my response, because people have asked, what would I do? This is what I would do. This is my opinion. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying this is my perspective. And if you ask me what you should do, uh, and some people have, I said, well, you do get more for your money, by and large, and I, by and large, uh, with an iPhone 8 Plus with the same money, with that, that, that same $1,000 budget. Um, and, and I feel that if you want to spend $1,000 on a new iPhone, and I, I think it, by the way, is, is kind of getting to the point of being, what? $1,000 for a pocket computer? But that's what it is. This isn't just a phone. I mean, how often do you use the phone, the, the feature, the phone feature in your smartphone? This is your... This is your everything, right? You know, I, I can understand spending a good amount of money on a product that's going to give you everything that you need, that you want, that you love, uh, that, that enables you to do things that you couldn't do before. Man, people ask me, you know, what kind of videos I like. Well, Star Wars primarily, but if, if it's in the realm of tech, I, I don't like watching gadget videos all that often. I really don't like reading gadget reviews. Uh, I don't watch tech videos. I really don't subscribe to any tech channels. The, the tech videos I love to watch are the technology videos that show how technology transforms lives. And no, I don't mean by turning your face into an animated poo. Um, but, you know, like I, I watched a video this morning, a, 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 an older gentleman uh, put on uh, uh, lenses, uh, like a sunglasses, which allowed him to see color for the first time, potentially in his entire life. That's transformative technology. You know, the same thing I've seen with uh, amputee uh, uh, patients uh, who were born potentially without limbs. Now there's a girl who's throwing out a, a, a pitch at the World Series in every uh, baseball stadium in the country. No, not every, I think every MLB uh, um, stadium in the country. Uh, that's technology that, that changes lives. That's exciting to me. A smartphone, it's kind of routine. I get its value, but, you know, I, I also kind of you know, put it in its place. It's going to be something that you're going to use on a frequent basis. It's something that, you know, you're going to want to work, and it's probably something you're going to want to appreciate or that you should appreciate, not just because you're trying to justify the $1,000 that you laid out for an iPhone 10 or, let's say, an iPhone 8 Plus. Um... Is it worth $1,000 to you? So if the answer to, you, to that question is no, then you have to ask yourself, okay, if it's not worth $1,000, how much is this worth to me? And, and everyone's going to have a different response. Now, you may say, well, it's only worth $500. Well, then if you decided that the value to you of, of an iPhone in general is $500, try to find an iPhone that is specifically within that 
restraint. And this is not about not having the money to spend. It's just about its relative value to you. Um, this is where I, I that's kind of where I, I, I feel I don't get agitated, believe it or not. Uh, when someone says it's too expensive, I, I just I, I, I'm hesitant to say it's an expensive product. It's just not for you. And, and if that doesn't cause concern, you know, maybe you're someone who has chased luxury items or does believe in the power of a logo over, over everything else. Um, I can tell you this, there are, um, features in other dogs. <laughs> there are features in other smartphones that are very similar, if not exactly the same, as what Apple's providing in the iPhone. But part of the iPhone cost is the the the, the fact that it works very well with other uh, uh, Apple devices. That's that's its that's its intangible value. So you can't just sit there and okay, you can, but I I don't I don't believe it's a it's a, it's a very reasonable position to say this company's been doing exactly the same thing when they they haven't exactly and that's the value of the iphone that apple carries forward it's knowing that it's going to work with other apple products you don't have the same guarantee absolutely not with any other company that's part of what sets apple apart part of the frustration i have with apple in, in dealing with these problems that i've dealt with is that they don't have competition true competition and i think that is it's starting to show uh you know i, I think it's 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 believing a little too much in their own hype, uh, but also where I want to caution you from making direct comparisons between what Apple's done in an iPhone and, let's say, uh, another Android device. It's not just a feature-for-feature -feature comparison. It's it's an idea. It's the implementation. It's specifically how that device interacts with every other device that you may have. If you don't have any other product except for that smartphone, okay, cool. You can make any decision you want and you know, features and implementation, probably not as, as much, as big of a deal as they might be, uh, you know, uh, for, for some of us who have more than one device and more than one person that we, you know, are around on, on a frequent basis. Um, you know, I, I do believe though, and I, I, I've seen a couple of people talk about this and it's something that I need to consider. One, um, I don't think I could justify spending a thousand dollars on an iPhone 10. For, for all the aforementioned reasons in videos that I've recorded in prior days. Um, this could set a potentially dangerous precedent for the industry. And I'm saying that because it's getting more and more expensive to do, seemingly. But I thought, you know, things got cheaper over time. Yeah, they get faster over time. But, I, I mean, are the costs rising as well? Or... It are other factors at play. I mean, you know, it's it's long been known that Apple traditionally has made more of its money in hardware. That's starting to shift now. They got services at play, software, um, you know, in terms of the App Store and, and enabling developers in their ecosystem. But you know, they make money in hardware uh, primarily. Not every company does. So it'll be interesting to see how the market responds to a one starting at $1,000 phone. I think they're going to chase it because it's the shiny object that, you know, it's, it's the best. And I use, I use that term very loosely when I'm referring to the iPhone 10, uh, just like I said, uh, greatest earlier, my little air quotes. Uh, I'm all about the hand gestures here today. Uh, so it's dangerous because if you buy it, they're going to keep selling it. And even if you don't buy it, someone else will. And they're going to keep selling it. So is Apple now not just pricing itself out of the marketplace, but but will it kind of tip tip people over or back into uh, you know alternatives, which by and large are Android at this point. I, I don't think I, I would consider anybody else a player. It's either iOS or Android. You have to make one of two choices with smartphones today. And then when you're with Android, pick your poison, right? So uh, is it going to price them out of the marketplace? I think Apple's built enough uh, a cultural cachet to not completely do that. Um, you have to recognize you just may not be Apple's customer anymore. You know, if they're not building that flagship product for you at a point where you can afford it, you're not Apple's customer. 
Again, I go back to saying cost is relative and you got other costs and those costs may outweigh benefits and those costs are not always uh, uh, specifically financial. Um, but I think it's it's dangerous because not, maybe not just for Apple, I'm not prognosticating and saying that, you know, Apple's doing a horrible thing at all. I'm not slagging Apple for this. I'm just saying you may not be their customer anymore. Uh, you may not have been their customer in the first place. It just so happens that you became their customer. But now they they're pushing the envelope that 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 cost envelope. Well, let's see how let's see how much money they will spend on this. How much money will they spend on it? And and and, and of course, the, the fewer people who can get it, the more rare it becomes, the more valuable it may be in the short term. Uh, which of course then drives that demand, and then that's all anybody can talk about. I'm going to sit here and tell you I don't think it's worth talking about. That's me. I think you know how I feel about how they've done this iPhone 10, but my concerns with the iPhone 10, believe it or not, don't have that much to do with its market value. Like that, that, that thousand dollars, twelve hundred, you know, fourteen hundred. However, when you add up taxes and the the fast charging adapters and all the things that you need to get, it's just like buying a a vehicle. You know, like well, you know, you can get this, but then if you get our, our this, then you get that. You know, your Apple Care and this, and pretty soon you spent two thousand dollars on a phone. That you're going to use for how long? That's going to retain its value, maybe. You get bragging rights, and 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 that's where I think it it it, it the iPhone 10 is less a functional device and a, a, a device worthy of your money and more of a status symbol. So the only reason I would suggest that someone buy an iPhone 10 isn't because of specs, isn't because of the screen, isn't because of their you know, face uh, scanning technology, which by the way, I haven't seen their implementation, but from a distance, I, I can't fault it. I think they're, they're going the right direction with it. Um, I, the only reason I could see or would understand someone wanting to buy this is specifically and only because it's is it's a status symbol. The iPhone 10 is a status symbol. They've priced it as such. We know the the we believe the supply chain is going to keep them in a limited uh, 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 a limited availability for who knows how long. Uh, you may not be able to get one until the next iPhone's announced next year. I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna go. But the only, the, the, the only reason I can imagine, and I've thought about this, that someone would want that, given everything that I've talked about related to, to UX and UI and software development, specifically lackluster uh, um, uh, software standards, it's because they want a status symbol. That's why. That's, that's the answer to my previous question. Why would anybody want this? They're looking for a status symbol. That's it. They want the Apple logo. So for if you think and you're still carrying on with this insipid argument that, well, Apple can change it in software, the, the ugly inclusion of the, the sensor array at the top of the screen, the permitterd, uh, if you're making the statement that they're going to fix it in software, t take it easy, Chris, they'll fix it in software, you've been using that same argument since iOS 7. They haven't. They likely won't. Because part of that status symbol is what it looks like. They don't want it to look like every other phone. They, they are intentionally making it look the way it looks. So it's likely a matter of time before you've seen the same type of visual inconsistency in other products from Apple. You may sh see the so-called notch, even though that's not an accurate term for what it is. It's what has become the term for it. Uh, you're going to see it potentially show up in the iPad. You may see it show up somehow for whatever reason in the Apple Watch, despite the Apple Watch's uh, human interface guidelines, HIG, being completely and radically different from the human interface guidelines uh, for the iPhone 10. You know, embrace the notch versus, you know, blend your app into the black on the watch. Why did it work on the watch, but it's inconsistent with uh, uh, this screen? Why? It doesn't make sense. Until you start, you know, realizing they want it to be a visually... A different device such that when someone's holding up a phone and you look over and you see it what do you see you see an iPhone but what, what, what type of iPhone do you see you see an expensive iPhone which means they got money people are willing to spend money to make themselves look 
like they lead a, a luxurious lifestyle. There's a whole thing on Instagram about this, like you know, FOMO and people look like they have amazing lives. I'm here to tell you my life sucks. Okay, that's not why I'm talking about this stuff. Today. I everything's relative, right? You know, we all have different problems. Um, the, uh, uh, but, but it's that status symbol. Part of what's going to make that differentiator is not making that fugly design catastrophe, uh, blend in with the phone. It's to make it stand out. And that's exactly what they're going to do. So it's a status symbol. That's it. And that's not for me. It's it's not. I I don't want that. Not from a technology solution that is nothing more than a tool, uh, you know, it, it, an enabler uh, for everybody. I, I that's not what I want. It's not me. If it's you, if if you care about the jeans that you wear and the the shoes that you wear and the glasses that you wear and the shirts that you wear and the underwear that you wear, all the way top to bottom. If you care about the car that you drive, if you care about all of these things. Because you want to be perceived as successful and rich and, you know, just this amazing person who's done very well for themselves. The iPhone 10 is for you. It's not for me. But it's, it, I, I, I find it very difficult to say that it's an expensive product. It's just not for you. I still think people will buy it. I still don't think that that speaks to its value. I do not think it's remotely worth $1,000. Speaking on technical terms, not just hardware, but hardware and software and service, uh, I don't think it's worth what Apple's asking. But it doesn't mean that it's not too expensive for you or for somebody else. It's a dangerous precedent, not just for them, because if they do it, other companies are going to try it if they haven't already. Um, yeah. So I'm not going to argue price, because the moment you start arguing price, someone's going to come in and say, oh, you just can't afford it. You see what I'm saying? That's not the argument. That's not the discussion. Uh, it's a status symbol. And maybe that's why I don't like it. <laughs> no, that's not. That's not why I don't like it. But I've never chased something, and I think you can tell. Like, I just, I don't care about what I wear. <laughs> I mean, I love Star Wars. Don't get me wrong. Like, I, I would, I would not want to be seen in public not wearing a Star Wars something. Even if it is my underoos. I'm not wearing my Star Wars underoos today, and yes, they make adult underoos now. And yes, I have a pair. Actually, I think I opened them and wore them on a live stream like three or four years ago. Don't look for that video. Uh, so, is the iPhone 10 too expensive for you? Uh, for anybody? I, I just want to have the conversation. You know, I, I wanted to talk through that because I think it's important to talk about and I think a lot of people gloss over it and, and it's an easy easy thing to say when you see $1,000 on the screen. But just think about it. It's a status symbol, man. That's why I'm not into it. That's just another reason why I'm just not, not going to chase it. I don't care. I don't care what... I don't. I genuinely do not care what somebody else thinks about me. I don't. Hence the reason why I leave comments open and I do things on the internet. By the way, thanks again for the tweets. Uh, I, I'm on Twitter. Yeah, we've got Star Wars radar, but Chris Perillo, I will warn you on, on social media, I can get very political. Mm, I, don't, I don't think that would surprise anybody. I talk about more than just one topic. I am me. Um, I am a human being just like the rest of you. Uh, so it's not just about this one thing. It's just right now that's the, the topic that is just it's it's burning a hole in my head, uh, that, so I have to talk about it. Uh, I intend on talking more about uh, the iPhone 10. Uh, I'm I'm I've got like a whole document. Um, it, some of the stuff I I put into the video description to 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 have you read it. Um, one video is going to be why switching I, uh, from iOS to Android is not easy. And I've got a few points on this um, because that's another one of these types of reactions. Like, well, if you don't like this, here's another. I'm like. That's a very knee-jerk response that, that doesn't encapsulate all the consequences for, for your actions. Uh, and also, iOS switch to Android, what Google would need to do. Um, those are a couple of videos that I want to record. Uh, another one is going to be iPhone 10 thoughts from Apple Intelligentsia. I've actually been collecting a series of tweets from developers and designers and uh, people who used to work for Apple and what they've been saying, I'd be by and large agreeing with my position on the matter of iPhone 10 being a, a, a UI and a UX catastrophe. Um, so that's going to be a separate video to show you what other people are saying if you haven't already done your research. But on Twitter, if you do see something, man, Tag me on it. Let me know. It's a great way uh, of connecting beyond the YouTube comments. Uh, I, I'm collecting those tweets. Um, collecting. Not like Star Wars stuff. <laughs> Technology and tweets, 
probably they don't make good collectibles. And then the other uh, video that I'm uh, working on doing for y'all is going to be uh, iPhone 10 reviews, what to watch out for. Now this is going to be, I, I'm really looking forward to, to talking about that because there's going to be a glut of, uh, of iPhone 10 reviews. And I, I can almost guarantee with precision what they are not going to talk about, what they will not cover because they have yet to cover a lot of these things, which is all the more reason why I get angry when I see an iPhone or any phone or any device review, they leave out so much critical information. But that's what you get from me. A lot of talking, hopefully a little bit of information, hopefully a little bit of insight to just go well beyond a, a, a tweet. Uh, thank you, everybody, for, uh, for watching. Thank you. I love you. I appreciate you. And may the force be with you.